if okay with with the feedback loops or the uh, tipping points that have already been triggered already and knowing what we are, know and also having of course a lot of room for not knowing <laughs> that space of you know the known knowns yeah. and the known unknowns and then the unknown unknowns as they say uh <laughs> but yeah. but when you get into this information and what's already happening i mean you know we're talking okay so for instance It'll say in your research, for instance, we can expect several degrees of warming within whatever time scale. I mean, it's hard to get our heads around, as, you know, what that really means and what kind of dr- dramatic shifts would occur in the lives of everyday sure. human beings. I mean, um, and I think already we're already starting to see some of these effects. I mean, we're already seeing climate change impacting the lives of people all around the world as we speak. Uh, exactly. And it's already really catastrophic. And so it's hard to imagine thinking, well, if we get past 1.5 C and to two or more, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I, I just, if you could speak to maybe your concerns and what you maybe would um, yeah. expect from My that. My concerns sound, sound a lot like your concerns that we're about one degree centigrade of warming and already some bad things are kicking off and some nasty surprises are coming back to us from the climate system that's recoiling or responding more abruptly than we might have expected. Um, and also there's some there's some warming baked in, as it were, that we haven't seen yet because the temperature doesn't respond instantaneously to the greenhouse gas level um it's lags behind so we're probably committed to the better part of one and a half degrees of warming already and it's going to be hard to avoid reaching that my personal take on it is just like yours we've already got some tricky things to manage and respond to at one to one and a half degrees of warming and it only gets um worse above that it it, it may be at, at the moment that we've started to commit this loss of some major ice sheets the only good news is at the current level of warming they're going very very slowly if they are going the problem is the more we warm it up the faster they go and it and again it doesn't respond linearly so if we go above two degrees of warming there's some evidence to and modeling to suggest that the ice sheet response and the sea level rise that we're committed to really starts to escalate and come quicker um and we also run the risk of tipping other uh faster responding bits of the climate system um so the my personal view is that three degrees centigrade of global warming will will is deeply dangerous and would be extremely difficult for societies to cope with particularly uh, poorer more vulnerable people in a world of what's going to be nine to 11 billion people on the planet so i would do everything in my power to try not to go to three degrees of warming and that's why i'm raising a flag because partly because several eminent economists have still continued to argue that three degrees of global warming might be just about optimal <laughs> and that to me is a kind of madness um let alone four degrees. I think I think we, we, we have it in our powers. There's enough fossil fuel in the ground to easily push it to four or five degrees of warming this century. But I don't think we would get there because I think we'd cause a, a breakdown of our civilization well before we got to that point, in my honest opinion. I, I'd like to be wrong on that, but um, I have some, some science to back it up. Yeah. Um, well, the, so, okay. So the thing, though, I, I feel like with tipping points is that, so if there's, for instance, large deposits of methane in uh, the Arctic region, I know uh, methane hydrates is one thing that's discussed. Um, also, mm-hmm. the permafrost is thawing as we speak. It's releasing methane and green other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Um, I believe that's actually mentioned in your article. I believe there's some mention of, of uh, greenhouse yeah. gases being released. So so my, 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 I guess my question is, you mentioned like if we don't stop now, we say if we stop burning fossil fuels right now, we could maybe limit it to what, two maybe or, or less degrees? Um, well, we, well um, the, the situation is we can't stop it overnight. In the best case scenario, um, we try to 
we try to change our whole energy system um, and go net zero, as it's called, net zero greenhouse gas emissions by about the middle of the century, about 30 years' time. And that's going to take a heroic. It's going to take a heroic effort if we collectively decide we want to go there. But it's still possible, and the UK is committed as a nation to doing that, mm, <laughs> and is busy mm. working out how to do it. Mm. Um, if we manage that, then the best case scenario is we might limit the warming to one and a half to two degrees ish, possibly even one and a half if we're lucky. And we'll have to ride that one out, and I think we would be able to. Um, but that that requires a heroic change in the current trajectory we're going on. The current trajectory is heading for way more than that. Um, even if all, all the commitments governments have made, even if they were to make good on those commitments, which is not clear that they would, we'd still be heading for more than three degrees of warming. And if... if if those commitments are just words and not followed through with action, then then the current trajectory would be taking us into the four right. or more degrees territory later this century. Now, you're right to then flag up that that can kick in some other responses from the climate system that can amplify the warming further or can just bring other forms of impact that are really difficult to deal with, as if the direct impact of that amount of warming won't be pretty hard to deal with in already hot parts of the world anyway. Um, so one of the big wild cards here is is what are clouds going to do? And um, we, we're in a situation where scientists are always trying to make better climate models and they've been busy trying to make the representation of clouds and climate models better based on new satellite-based observations and so on. Now, some of the latest models are showing a um, a response from clouds that actually just makes things worse. Basically, they think they've improved the representation of clouds in the models based on new data, but they've it's changed the models in a way that the clouds, instead of dampening the effect of global warming by making by the clouds getting more reflective, instead that effect's not nearly as strong as it was before. And so some of the models are, are much more sensitive in the sense that they warm more for the same rise in greenhouse gas levels and they warm quite a bit more. Now, we've we've got to hope those models are wrong, frankly, because they're showing about nearly twice the climate sensitivity or the warming for a given greenhouse gas level as the previous generation of models. So we wait with interest to see see whether that's right or wrong but it's yet another case where the crucial feedbacks in the climate system um, we, we need to understand them better for sure but uh, they could become our enemy rather than our friend 